Hello everyone, today's video is gonna be about the Galaxy Z Fold 7 again and we are talking about 7, yes, just 7 of the best settings that I will recommend you to do on your brand new Galaxy Z Fold 7. We did a video about the best settings for the Galaxy S25 Ultra not too long ago. All of those settings will also apply to this phone. It is just that the Z Fold 7 is indeed a folding phone, so you have a lot more extra features to deal with. So if you are a first-time Galaxy Z Fold user or if you are a returning user but you want to know what's the best tips available, then yeah, do hit that like and subscribe button because I have been using the Galaxy Z Fold for many years, so I'm pretty familiar with it. It's just that One UI 8 with the Galaxy Z Fold 7 also has a lot more extra features. So let's get started with the first setting. So one thing that you can do right now is to mirror the home screen. So you can see by default for this generation, I think I can't remember when they did it, um, it is turned on by default. So what this does is that your cover display, this kind of layout will be the same when you unfold it. It is just that this is page one, page two, page three, page four. And if we fold the phone, then you can see the same thing happens here as well. Page one, page two, page three, page four. Now, if you want two different layouts, one for the folded display and then another one for this big unfolded display, you can do that. Just disable this option, apply, and then all of a sudden, this home screen layout is totally different from your cover display. As you can see, there are some gaps here and there is no gap here. And that is because the bigger display will have I think it's six by five layout. I'm not too sure, but yeah, you have another extra column of things to put here. Personally for me, I will turn it on because I just find it a bit annoying to micromanage both home screens layouts. So I just have it sync between the two uh, folded and unfolded displays. The second setting that I recommend you to tune is how your apps respond when you move from the unfolded display to the cover display. So for example, what I have here is like, for example, Google Play, if I fold the phone, it tells me to swipe to continue. And then if I swipe, it will go to the Google Play Store like this. So it basically just continues the app from the unfolded display to the cover display. If I don't swipe for a while, then it will just lock the screen. There you go. You can change this setting by heading into the settings menu, of course, and then go into display and then find the option here called continue apps on cover screen. So if you turn it into always, that means every single app that you are using on the unfolded display, when you fold it, it doesn't even ask you to swipe to continue or not. It will just automatically transition to the cover display. That means when you fold the display, the screen will not be locked. I will just show you again with uh, Google Play Store, I fold the display, and then we just continue here. That means that means you have to press the power button to lock the screen, which I find it to be um, quite annoying. So I just use the best compromise between the two options. So that is to swipe up to continue. My third setting that I recommend you to tune is this one, aspect ratio. So as you can see here, we have full screen, four by three, and also 16 by nine to choose from and I have a bunch of apps here. It's quite unfortunate actually, because some of the apps, let's just say um, Shopee for example, this app is notorious for foldable devices because it just doesn't scale nicely. As you can see, it is filling up the display, but the, the things are too big and I cannot see more than two items per view and I have to aggressively scroll down to view more items. And as you can see here, what the heck is this? It's only halfway through. And then if I fold the display, it will never continue properly because it will tell me to restart the Shopee app so that it can scale. It doesn't have dynamic scaling. That, that's what I'm trying to say. And when you unfold the device, it will tell you this, and then you have to press the zoom button just now to restart the app again and then make it fill the entire screen. But since this view is kind of unusable, what you can do is to lock the aspect ratio of the app. So if you go here, you can see 
you can choose the aspect ratio to be full screen, which I don't want. 4x3, which actually doesn't help much. It doesn't change much from what we have using the full screen mode. Or 16x9, which becomes like this. Now, it's quite unfortunate because I do think that Samsung needs to update the aspect ratio once more. Because if I'm using it in 16x9, if I fold it, I swipe, it still wouldn't continue and it will still tell me to restart. And that is because this cover display is using a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. Samsung should update this menu to include a 21 by 9 aspect ratio instead. But as of now, I would still say if you're using some apps that cannot scale properly, like Shopee, then just use it in 16 by 9 aspect ratio as that will be a lot better in terms of experience. Another app that I want to highlight is actually Instagram. So as you can see here, Instagram, it scales properly to fill up the entire screen, but all of the Reels preview is kind of, uh, well, as you can see here, you can't really see everything in one view. So what you can do is to also lock Instagram into a 16 by nine aspect ratio. That would be a much more conventional type of uh, aspect ratio and as you can see the reels are much more well you can look at it at a glance without having to tap into the video. Yeah, You will have to experiment with all of these because every single app will behave differently and especially for foldables. There are actually quite a lot of apps that will scale properly and there are also a lot of apps that just while it seems like it scales properly, it just is quite unusable if it's in full screen mode. The fourth setting that I have for you here is also in the display and it has to do with the taskbar. So as you can see here, One UI 8 comes with a brand new taskbar design. It didn't used to look like this and now it's been updated to look like this, which I think is a lot nicer. And you can actually select how many recent apps to show on the taskbar. So. As you can see, I have four apps here, Settings, Instagram, Shopee, and Google Play Store. If I turn it off, then all of those apps will disappear. And you can select up to two, three, or four. I just like it to use in four because what I can do is actually do something like this. Uh, let's just say something like this because it's just easy to you know, launch a few apps at once if I have more apps shown in the taskbar. So again, it depends on how you want to use your phone and uh, this is how I use my phone. And the fifth setting that I want to share with you here is actually with modes and routines. With the Galaxy Z Fold or Z Flip series, you can actually add one more condition which I think is very useful. Let's just say I want to do auto rotation when the phone is halfway flipped because you know, flex mode. So what you can do is uh, there's one condition called folding status and you can set it to be detecting completely open, partially folded or completely closed. I will use it in partially folded and then what I will do is screen orientation, give it to uh, let's just say landscape, road direction, right, save, folding status, go. Okay, why this is actually important is because of YouTube. So this is our review for the Galaxy Z Fold 7 and with that moods and routines in place, if I just partially fold it right now, it will turn on auto rotate and automatically rotate the screen to be like this. Yeah, that's how moods and routines will work with the partially folded condition. And I think this is a very handy Thing to do on your foldable device because if you want to watch YouTube videos uh, yeah if you watch it in full screen mode like this you have black bars so the best way to actually watch your video is by doing this the phone can stand on its own and you can just sit back and relax and watch the video and you even have the seeker buttons here as well so yeah I just think that these kind of settings, you have to experiment on how you want to use your device, but modes and routines will probably cover your back with all of the settings that it has. Now for setting number six, this is a bit of a weird one because I have stated in our full review that this 
fingerprint scanner is a lot thinner than before so the surface area to actually read your fingerprint is a lot smaller as well which might pose a problem when it comes to reading your finger so what you can do is actually to add your same finger multiple times so for me i like to unlock my phone using my left middle finger what i did is to register my middle finger twice and if we just check our added finger here you can see fingerprint one keeps on detecting fingerprint one all of a sudden fingerprint three because i registered uh, fingerprint one is this fingerprint two is this and fingerprint three is also this and yeah you can just register your same finger twice so that it covers even more surface area when you try to unlock it. This is a trick that you can do on your foldable device. Both the uh, Z Flip 7 and Z Fold 7 have the exact same thin fingerprint scanner. So this tip applies to both devices. And I got an extra tip for you here, which is the fingerprint always on. This description might sound like it's not really helping, but I can assure you it's actually very useful. So let me just lock the screen here right now. If I touch the fingerprint scanner, it doesn't unlock the device. So if you turn on the fingerprint always on to both the main and cover screens, if I lock the device once more, now I can just touch it and then it will unlock it for me. You can change the fingerprint to be always on only for the cover display or the main display or both. And uh, again, it really depends on how you want to use your device. For me personally, I will use it for main screen only because I wouldn't just leave my phone like this on the table and just not using it. So yeah, just, just how I use the device, this is the best setting for me. My seventh setting that I want to share with you here is actually going into the browser of your choice. And as you can see here, um, yeah, this is my Synology NAS and the interface is just, I would say, reduce and it's not really that usable if you compare it with the desktop website so what you can do press this three button click on desktop site and all of a sudden it becomes your desktop interface and this interface is actually a lot better as you have a lot more access to many of the other packages within dsm and yeah i just use the desktop mode on the galaxy z fold series a lot more compared to the mobile version of their websites because the mobile version will work for a phone like this but not for a phone like this and yeah those are all of the seven settings that i want to share with you here today if you have any other tips or settings that you want to share leave them down in the comment section below because i would like to hear what you do with your galaxy z fold 7 and yeah do like and subscribe we'll see you guys in the next video